I just can't have compassion for her. And I've gone on a lot of blogs and I see a lot of responses um, of what people think should happen. And most people said the same thing you did. The gates of hell are waiting for you. You, how can you, how can this woman ask for a compassionate release when Sharon Tate begged her for forgiveness? I mean, not for forgiveness, but when Sharon Tate begged her for mercy, she had no mercy, no compassion for anybody, any of her victims, the LaBiancas or anybody else. How could anyone give this woman compassion? A cold-blooded killer like that. And I know she knew what she was doing. They're never going to fool me. I believe they knew every step of what they're doing. They're yeah. not, they weren't insane. Yeah, they were criminally insane and they're evil. Shortly after that is when the LaBiancas was killed. Uh, I think it was the next night. Yeah, not too long after it, but when, when Susan Atkins got to jail, uh, she's the one that was telling uh, her cellmate that there was, they had a death list, and, and some of the names that I, I remember, because I wrote them down, was Richard Burton, Tom Jones, the singer, Frank Sinatra, and Steve McQueen. That was some of them. I don't know if there was other ones or not, but, uh, and, and she wants mercy? Yeah, she wants a compassionate release so she can die outside of prison. Well, they need to outlaw that little program, don't they? Yeah, well, she's been denied, and I think they're going to keep denying her. I just don't think she deserves a compassionate release. I, I'm on my soapbox about it. I do not like Susan Atkins. I do not feel pity for her, for what she's done. I don't feel pity for any of them, and I just can't believe Manson's still alive. I, don't, I just can't figure out why if somebody didn't get him in prison for the things that he's done, too. Yeah. And... Where that happened, uh, that area uh, where, Matt, where Tate was killed, uh, Sharon Tate, the beautiful Sharon Tate, uh, that was just a, just a couple miles from uh, Laurel Canyon. You know, it's all part of that area there. So it's all part of the same area. And, uh, you know, where a little bit of famous people were. And starting in, I believe, like 65 or 66, you know, about that time frame. Um, before then, it was something else, an old movie set or... Uh, something or other. But anyway, if we link that up, people can learn more from reading uh, the Laurel Canyon site that uh, uh, Dave McGowan has, and it would tell more than what I can explain it, and he does a really excellent job with it, you know. Well, if you look up Dave McGowan, and that's what I've done, they'll come up with various sites on him, and they can read about Laurel Canyon, yeah. because it really is very fascinating. They said that Manson murdered Sharon Tate randomly, and I don't believe that. And as I read through some of the Laurel Canyon information that you sent me, it turns out that she was friends with Mama Cass from the Mamas and Papas. And Sharon Tate often visited a Mama Cass at her home in Laurel Canyon. And guess who was the house guest of Mama Cass as well, the whole Manson family. So there's no way that that could have been a random murder. They knew her ahead of time. How could Mama Cass have the Mansons in her house and Sharon Tate and them not, them not running in, into each other? They obviously had to run into each other prior to her murder. No one's ever going to convince me that that was a random murder because it was not. And they, a lot of them, uh, Mama Cass too, in that same area, you know, Laurel Canyon, it's all of that there, you know. She That's died too, 32 years old. <laughs> Everyone involved with Laurel Canyon, and Manson was all through Laurel Canyon. Uh, yeah. I did read that he... I know he he, um, he auditioned for Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and he I guess he was turned down. And I heard he interviewed or auditioned for someone else as well. Obviously, his singing career never took off, and I'm wondering if that's why all this these bad things have happened through Laurel Canyon against all these singers. There's so many deaths, the Almond Brothers, all kinds of uh, information on there. And there's so many murders and deaths that it's even hard to follow. You really have to sit down and look at the information. There's just too many. And that can't be a coincidence. I think Nash and Young of Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, that both their girlfriends, I believe, were murdered. Yeah. Yeah, it just, there's, there's so much to it. And there's a lot of information packed in his little site. It's really, really good. Yeah, that's a wonderful site. So people it's some of the best info I've run across lately besides the Franklin cover-up that I read. When you sent it to me, I, I couldn't believe what I was reading and all the connections. And guess who lived across from Mama Cass? 
Abigail Folger, who was also murdered at Sharon mm -hmm. Tate's home that night. Mm -hmm. one, co and one coincidence after, after another. another. Huh? And the Mansons visited Mama Cass. Like I said earlier, they were at her home. They were mm -hmm. always a guest. And across the street was Abigail Folger. And Sharon Tate visited the house. That was not a random murder. And I don't know why they label it as a random murder. There's a lot that goes on to that canyon. And I believe a lot of satanic things happen. There are suicides, mysterious suicides happen, murders, accidents. I just think that there's a whole connection there. Yeah. It's a very interesting site. So we, yeah. will, we will get into that more in the next interview. Okay. But our time is about up. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, I believe that's probably about it. I think we pretty well covered what we said we was going to cover, except I want to read uh, Ephesians 6, verse 12, if you don't mind. You go right ahead. Uh, for, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know that is so true. The flesh and blood is not all that's involved with this. And it was never just political. It was always spiritual. And it was a really evil regime that we're up against. It's spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And they want to take us down. And I've heard them say, you don't need to pray. You don't need to pray. Well, I pray. Whenever I have a, a moment to myself, I pray now. Because I did hear that's a spiritual attack back on them. And I just pray all the time. And you're right. It's much more than just flesh and blood. It's spiritual and they're here they're here to take us down. And not just Christians, but everybody that they want to follow their pattern and their agenda. So I thank you very much for reading that and I thank you again for coming on the show. And let's talk about Laurel Canyon next time. In a couple of weeks we'll both go over the information again because there is so much there. I'd like to see those movies as well, Wonderland with Val Kilmer and Four on the Floor, if they still have it, I don't know. And then we can discuss it again, and we can talk more about the Satanism that was probably involved there as well. Yep, that would be good. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Again, thanks for everything you've been doing. We really, everybody appreciates it. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye. China's consistent use of excessive military force to stifle dissent has resulted in widespread human rights abuses including multiple cases of arbitrary arrest, political imprisonment, torture and execution. Human rights groups have documented at least 60 deaths of peaceful demonstrators since 1987 and there is thought to be many, many more. In Tibet, human rights groups have confirmed by name over 700 political prisoners, although they are likely to be hundreds more whose names are not confirmed. Many are detained without charge or trial for up to four years through administrative regulations entitled Re-Education Through Labour. China is a major player on the international economic scene and many Western businesses have their interests over there. They make vast profits out of cheap sweatshop labor. China's human rights record is abysmal. This regime is both oppressive, totalitarian and they don't give a damn about the freedom of the individual or the freedom of speech. In recent weeks, the oppressive Chinese regime have dealt a vile blow to freedoms in Tibet. Monks have been killed, innocent people have died. Most Western governments are just paying lip service against these abuses. They are not going to do a thing, for they have too many business interests there. They make too much profit out of sweatshop labor. So it's up to us. Go to the Edge's Action page at theedgeam.com and make a difference. We are running three actions on this oppressive regime in China. That's the edgeam.com forward slash edge action. Do you think you can make a difference in a world where there is so much injustice? Does this injustice upset you? 
Does it make you feel powerless, overwhelmed? I mean, what can one person do? Take action from the comfort of your chair. Make a difference with the new Edge Action area of the Edge AM's website. Make sure you make a difference by going to the edgeam.com forward slash edge action. That's the edgeam.com.